are you, darling? So, you ordered the Facebook special. And this month, because we are walking into the new year, we don't have to enter the new year. The special is actually a upcoming year preview. So, we're going to bring you a 12 card spread to see what's going on for the year. Now, um, I'm not sure how this is going to come out. One of two things or a combination of these things could occur. You can go through it by the natal wheel. I'm laying them out with the intentions of seeing what is going to be going on for each month. Okay? But, we could end up seeing different things or just focusing on one particular thing or a couple of particular things. It just depends on what the spirit has to say for you. So we're going to go ahead and ask everything, every deity, every entity, every spirit, every ancestor that loves Miss. Bring us a message to show us what is and what will be for her in 2019. Show us what is and what will be for Miss Armstrong in 2019. Asking that she open the door for information. Show us what is and will be for Miss in 2019. Okay. January. February. March. April. May. June, October, November, and December. Right. All right, let's turn these over and see what we're working with. Okay. January, you come in with the Three of Pentacles. Good card. Three of Pentacles. This is the sun in Capricorn. So as you know, the sun represents yourself, your personal energy, your personality. It's what people see when they see you. It's just the essence of who you are. And it's in the sign of Capricorn. Now, Capricorn is a taskmaster and a hard worker. Okay? So, I mean, and it's a three. So, your work ethic is going to propel you into success, at least in the material world. As far as possession goes, earthly things go, things that you can touch and see, you got that down to a science. And the people that's going to be working with you, they're going to be instrumental in helping you with that uh, success. Because uh, the Three of Pentacles, <clears throat> um, I like to refer to it as the teamwork makes the dream work card. Because it just indicates that everybody you're working with, y'all work well together. And, you know, pretty much because of your hard work, success is fairly guaranteed, okay? So, as far as, you know, people around you and the people you work with, pretty good, all right? February comes in. Again, you come in with more money cards, okay? You come in with the Seven of Pentacles. Now, here's the thing here, though. It's what you need to be aware of when it comes to this Seven of Pentacles. 
You guarantee success. You guarantee to collect your coin. However, the work gets to be too much. You know, I'm not going to say it's like overwhelming, but the work gets to the point. You know how you doing something you just want your stuff now, but you can't get it until you complete the job. So basically, when you start to feel like, dang, I want it, I want it, I want it. Just understand that it's a little bit more work to do. And if you just stay the course, you're going to get a reward from staying the course. Okay. Uh, March. Ooh, Ten of Cups. Okay. Now, this is a good card, but it's a bad card at the same time. Ten of Cups shows you happiness, well-being, all of that. And it is around family life. Okay. Okay. However, this card also carries the Neptunian energy, okay? Not Neptune, Pisces, but Neptune rules Pisces. Pisces is oftentimes the daydreamer. So while you may feel like, okay, I got this happy family coming, and, then, and you might aggressively pursue this because this is Mars in this particular planet, all right? Mars in uh, yeah, I mean Mars in this sign. So you have Mars um uh, aggressively pursuing your passion, which is wanting this family life. And um, because of this Pisarian energy, what you're gonna find yourself doing in order to get this is denying the fact that there are some things present that you don't like. And you're doing this so you can have this dream of having this well-balanced, stable family. So we're going to see how this plays out. Okay, April, you come in with the Eight of Swords. Now, the Eight of Swords is not necessarily a bad card. What you got is somebody constrained and restricted. Because it's a source, we're talking about thoughts. It is so much going on and so many different things to do that basically you kind of trap yourself inside of this mental prison, okay? It's like you just, it's just so much to do. You can't even move because you can't get past your thoughts. That's what you're looking at in April, Okay. It's also interesting that this is happening in April because this uh um April is who is that? January, February, March, April, Aries, Taurus. So it could play out around you know like your money or even um work you know you gotta find you some balance or something because you just get trapped in something so you need to basically find an outlet in order to be able to uh not be trapped in your mind about stuff very interesting interesting because in may you come in with the hangman again we are, again, looking at Neptunian energy. However, it's not too bad with this particular card. This is a major arcana card. This is basically saying, hey, you need to, you basically force yourself to sit down and figure out how are you going to basically self-sacrifice to gain a certain thing. Um, Just because of this card right here. It's looking like a relationship. So you basically can figure out what you can sacrifice in this relationship in order for this relationship to maintain. And you do get some needed time to clear your mind or whatever. But remember, because this is associated with Neptune, Neptune likes to daydream. Neptune likes to escape. So you want to watch, you know, how much you drink in or, you know, if you engage in recreational drugs or whatever. You want to make sure that you are watching your intake and stuff like that because Neptune is good for getting people, you know, strong out. You be looking at people with addictions and stuff. You want to look and see what that Neptune got going on, all right? 
Okay, when we get to June, you come in with the nine of wands. Okay, so we talking about action here. However, with the nine of wands, what you are seeing is somebody that has been in a battle. And they have taken a lot of bumps, bruises, and scars from these battles, okay? But they're not defeated. So most people refer to the nine of wands as the wounded warrior or whatnot. That's because although they have been beaten, they have taken on some scars and some things like that. If you look at this card, you can see she's hiding off in this tree. Like, you, I don't know if you can see her face or not, but... She looks wary, she looks concerned, but she's in a position to flee if need be. Not necessarily saying that you're going to flee a particular situation or whatever, but if it's time for you to battle, you are basically ready to stand battle. And because you've taken all these bumps, bruises, scars, and um, um, small losses, you know, you are in a better position to develop a more strategic um, plan to, you know, navigate through whatever the situation may be. Then you come in in July with the Knight of Swords. Basically, this is what you want to see, especially when you talk about battles and preparing for them. The Knight of Swords comes through and he's like, <laughs> I'm ready. Who want it? You can get it. And this is air energy. So basically, your battle is going to be fought through the way you think, the way you communicate, <clears throat> and things like that. It's going to be because of your intellect that you are able to win these battles because your intellect and communication is going to allow you to uh, collect the resources that you need in order to win the fight. And... Hey, you ready for it? Somebody come at you with it? You ready? Okay, so uh, where are we going? What was it? July, August. August, you come in with the King of Cups. Okay, but he's in reverse. Now, let's talk about this guy in reverse. Usually when he's upright, that's what you want to see. You want to see this guy upright. When he's upright, he's an authoritative figure. He's a male figure because he's carrying cups. Well, because he's king, he's oftentimes married. Because he is in reverse, what you have is somebody that is very seductive, especially in the manner that they communicate. And their motives for doing some of the things that they do are not, you know really in line with what you have going on. You know, they, they this, this person can behave in a way that, you know what I'm saying, you might not find acceptable. And whatever negotiations and deals that you may have with this person, it, that, that is, it's not going to work. Like, it, it got to go. Okay, no. Um, what you have here is um, Scorpio hanging out and um, you have Scorpio energy, okay? So it's coming from a place of intellect because it's coming out of out of uh, Libra, this particular card, water card, and he's hanging out. Um, sorry, he's hanging out um, in the last degrees of Libra, going into Scorpio. That Scorpio energy can be very, very deceptive. And oftentimes, it's not deceptive on purpose. It's just deceptive because it's just the nature of Scorpio. It's very deep. It's deep water. You know, it's dark. They like to keep secrets. They like to hide things because they don't want to appear so emotional. But they are. They're very emotional creatures. They just hide it. That's why, you know, a lot of people say, oh, Scorpio is a mean or evil or whatever. They just... It just don't want to be seen that way. But you're looking at somebody that's moving in a way that may or may not be beneficial to you. But either way it goes, you don't like the way that they're moving. And that is going to present a problem. I'm noticing a theme here. It seems like as far as work and career goes, that you're doing fine. It looks like it's this area of this relationship that is causing an issue. You don't have to keep looking at it. 
So now you come in with the world card. Again, another reverse card. This is Saturn energy. Saturn is all about lessons and limitations. So what I'm getting here is basically come um, September, this is just get reckless decisions. I mean, I, I ain't no other way for me to sugarcoat it, put it, make it sound nice, dress it up. I, I cannot. Because when you see the world card, once you get to the point of the world, that means you have mastered all the skills and tasks you need in order to start a new journey. Um, in the tarot world, when you start out on a journey, you start out with the food. And the food has all the tools he needs. He just doesn't know how to utilize them. By the time you get to the end of the Major Arcana, you this is the last card of the Major Arcana. He has tools. He's learned. He's been through things. He knows. But when you got this in reverse, he's just not utilizing the tools that he has and he needs in order to, uh, you know, benefit himself. And that's what we're looking at here. You come in um, <clears throat> in September with this. You're just making poor decisions, you know, and, and being stagnant. And I'm thinking it's got to do with this. This, 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 whoever this guy is and this woman, this family thing. That's that's what it feels like to me. Um, you can't allow nobody to take you off of your square. I don't care how bad you want it or whatever. You just can't let nobody bring you down like that. Um, November. I mean, October. October, you come in with the strength card. She is also reversed. This is Leo energy. We know Leo is very prideful. Now, because this is getting prideful, and if this, if I am correct, that this is an involvement of relationship. When you see this strength card in reverse, and we talk about relationship, and we talk about pride, we talk about pride being in the wrong place. We talking about we going to go do stuff like bus out windows, slash tires and do stuff like that. We don't need to do none of that. We don't need to do none of that. Because it's not going to benefit you in the long run. Um, turn it around. That's the best thing I can tell you. Turn it around. Turn it around and make it suit you. Turn it into a better situation. For you, don't don't let nobody take you down this path of of of, of wretchedness that <laughs> people sing about and rap on. <laughs> Excuse me, don't do it. Okay, just don't do it. All right. <laughs> I know it's easy for me to say being on the other side of the situation or not in the situation, but yo, don't don't do it. Come on. Because you got too much intellect, you got too much skill, you got too much pride to let somebody drag you down to that low of a denominator. <clears throat> in November, we see the four of cups. Again, it is in reverse. So I'm looking at you coming in reverse towards the end of the year. So it's going to take you a whole year to finally realize what the hell is going on with this particular relationship. All right. So. Um, the four cups usually the card about boredom or whatever. When it's in reverse, it is still boredom. But now we can couple that with depression. Okay. And what you got here is the moon energy and it's in the sign of cancer. And I can see that because over here you're looking at a family life. Cassarian energy is always surrounded by family. Then you got the moon rules cancer. Um you got the moon ruler and the sign sitting right over here. And basically, you just become bored with the situation. Like, you don't care no more. You're going to give up on everything, and it, it doesn't matter. Nothing matters, okay? And the problem with that is, is when you get to this point where nothing matters, you end up missing opportunities, okay? So, yeah, 
you miss opportunities. That's just basically all it is when you stop caring and not paying attention to what's going on. You miss opportunities. By the time you get to December, you come in with the Six of Cups. It's also in reverse. When you see this reverse, Six of, I mean, not Cups, Pentacles, Six of, six of Pentacles in reverse. You're looking at, again, that moon energy. But this time, it's in the sign of Taurus, which is not necessarily a bad thing. That's when you start to realize, hey, I'm putting more into this than I'm getting out. And that's not fair. And it's not fair. You should have to put more into a relationship than what you're getting out of a relationship, okay? That's just reading the cards on their head. Now we're going to go back through and look at this from a natal wheel perspective, okay? You come in with the strength card, all right? Strength. This means that you have all the pride and you are able to move through anything. That's how you being seen. Um, whenever you get to the first house of the zodiac, that is I am, therefore I am. Honestly, because this is um um reversed, what I'm actually seeing here is what you are being seen at seen as as being a person who is lacking their pride and their strength. I have to attest to that. I honestly wanted to ask you the last time we had a message. I know it was a very brief conversation, but I can feel your energy. I wanted to ask you, are you depressed? Are you sad or something? Because that's like, that's what I felt coming off of you. I just wanted to see if you were all right. But that's what you come in. Second house, as far as resources, collecting your stuff, you're looking real good. World card, it's in reverse. You probably make some good, poor decisions. Here and there, or you're not applying everything that you know that you could in order to secure your resources, but you have the tools and the knowledge to get your stuff. Third house, this is day to day communication, this is learning, everything. You come in with the King of Cups. Like I said, this person moves and they do stuff, and they, they might seem beneficial, they might seem helpful, but there is an ulterior motive behind it. They could be rude, they could be nasty, and that's like in your day-to-day -day communication or whatever. Your fourth house is the house of home, family, and early child life, and what you have here is the Knight of Swords, and I mean, you're ready to fight to defend your family, and there is absolutely nothing wrong with it. Like I said, that's that Mars energy. And the sign of Gemini. So you got two earth signs. And that's a battle. You got Gemini and you have Libra. And that's pretty much a fight. Libra is about balance. But as I said before, you saw that there was no balance coming through by the end of the year. So there is that. Um, fifth house, house six, house of fun, like where you release your energy, stuff like that. You have the nine of swords, like I said, that's taking on, that's being cautious. So that means, like, if you need to watch who you hang with, watch who you talk to, and all that, hey, do that. Whatever you need to do to make sure that you are protected, do that. Okay. Uh now, um, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, six house. This is the house of work and service. This is your job. You have a seven here. Seven is partnership, okay? So this work partnership is going to need to be re-evaluated because there is a lot of self-sacrifice that's going to go into this and you need to decide exactly where you are gonna go as far as what you gonna sacrifice, what you willing to sacrifice, what you not willing to sacrifice, how much are you willing to give up to have this thing that you want as far and that's that's coming around your work and service. Could even be your health. You might need to sit down and make sure you know ain't no sickness or illness or nothing like that coming through. 
Um, seven. Seven. This is the House of Partnership. You got this Eight of Swords here. A whole lot of thoughts. Lots of thoughts. Lots of thoughts. So many thoughts that you feel like you are in prison, but you are not in prison. Take some time. Breathe in. Breathe out. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Because she is not trapped like she thinks she is. Her ties are loose. And she can get them off. She's just so caught up in what she sees that she's not making any movement. Okay? Um, eighth house. This is the house of death and regeneration. Okay? Interesting enough, this ten of cups is sitting here. Like I said, you want to make sure. That you are paying attention to everything that you are thinking and that you are feeling. And if it needs to die, let it die. Don't let things fester and grow and continue to fester and grow and fester and grow and fester and grow. And you know it needs to move on. That is a very spiritual house. And it seems like as far as what you think and evaluate and how you see your family life, you probably need to reevaluate it and try that over again. Rethink that situation. That that particular situation could lead you to drink and all of that stuff. Just make sure you're mindful of it. Okay. Um ninth house. Ninth house is the house of travel and intellect, high learning, abstract learning. You come in with the what is that? The seven of pentacles in reverse. So you're going to be learning some new stuff. I don't know whether you're going to some type of training or something, but it's going to be a workload for you. And it's going to benefit you. The thing is, it's going to feel overwhelming at times. At least you're going to be mentally tired of it. That's okay. Just remember, if you stay the course, you will reap the benefit. And the tenth house is the house of your career. Basically, that's that three of pentacles right there. Teamwork make the dream work. Everybody that you are behind, um, anybody that you are behind, um, you are working with, they're going to be supportive to you. It's going to be beneficial to you to help with your career or whatever. Then you come out. In the 12th house with the Six of Pentacles, again, it is in reverse. Basically, this is another one of those spiritual houses, very mystical houses, the 12th house. The 12th house is also known as the house of self-undoing, which means essentially self-sabotage. So what you are looking at is you kind of self-sabotaging yourself, especially in a monetary way. In order to get something that you want, you're not you're giving and giving and giving and giving and you're not getting back in return. And that is not fair. That's not balanced and that is not healthy. Okay. So, for the most part, you look good. What I'm saying here, and if I'm wrong, please tell me, but everything you can see coming up is this relationship. And I keep saying that because I don't usually, usually... Sometimes when I give readings, I just get a fairly general reading. But, like, there are certain things that get zeroed in on, and it just seems like that is just popping up. That's just screaming at me. So, basically, what I'm saying is that relationship may not be no good for you. And instead of allowing all of this to play out, just go ahead and accept it for what it is and let it go now. Because you got too much good stuff going on to let somebody that's not even... 100% where you are get into it. You know? So, I hope this helps and I will talk to you soon. Happy New Year. Stay dark and lovely. My spring and lovely light.